for episode two. Episode two. I am Lilac. And I'm Nightshade. And welcome back to the Lack and Shade Review. Um, we uh, Before we start, we just want to give a quick shout out to everybody that watched our first show. We appreciate it so much. We appreciate all the likes and comments and all the love and support you've shown us so far. So, and we just hope that you continue and tell more people, um, subscribe to our channel. And, um, you know, we're here and we're going to keep going until we can't anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we also want to give a quick shout out to Substrate Radio, um, in particular one show, um, Sleep In Cinema with Gareth and Craig. They had us on um, this morning, Saturday morning, and we had a great time and uh, we just really appreciate them reaching out to us and uh, give us an opportunity to come in and talk to them about film and to promote our show. So shout out to them. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, you said it all full. <laughs> yes, I did say a mouthful. All right, so everything we planned. Just goes up. Okay. So we gotta we're gonna move on with the we show. We didn't plan guys. that part. <laughs> we did not plan that part. We didn't. She's a control freak. She doesn't want to admit it, but she's a control freak. It's okay. Moving on with the show line. Anyway. <laughs> we the did show. not plan I, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Black spotlight. So black spotlight. See what I mean? Thank you, Lila. We're gonna go with the black spotlight. Our first person we're gonna be spotlight is Kay Roche. She's a self-published author, poet, and playwright. She's originally from Starkville, Mississippi. Sorry, shout out to Mississippi. I was born in Mississippi in Mississippi. Hattiesburg. Yeah, yeah. So, a uh, fellow Mississippi girl, shout out to her. <laughs> right. And she's currently, currently, she's currently residing in Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> Alright, so she's also a featured panelist at the National Book Club Conference in Atlanta. Her books include The Appearances Trilogy, I Prayed About It, and her children's book, Dregs and Black Eye the Bully. Now, she has two upcoming book signings. Uh, one is on February the 22nd from 2 to 4 at Barnes & Noble. And uh, the, the second one is going to be February 29th at 2nd and Charles from, uh, from 12.30 to 2.30. I can't talk today. All right, <laughs> and uh, you can definitely follow her on Instagram at appearances underscore K Roche. Instagram once again, it's at appearances underscore K Roche. K Roche on Instagram. We just want to uplift her, and you guys check out her books. Uh, go to her book signing and show her some love. Definitely, definitely. All right, and then um, our next black spotlight is this rapper her name is chica she is from montgomery alabama um so her claim to fame how kind of how she got started is she did a freestyle over kanye's jesus walks and kind of called him out for a couple of things that he's been doing and saying lately uh mr <laughs> Uh uh no no we won't we're not nope. gonna get into what's it, going on with Kanye say it about right Ye. now. Say it about Ye. This is about Chica. We're not gonna get into it, but if y'all know what's going on, you know, you know. Um, he he gets no play on this show. He no. doesn't. He just gave out a bunch of his Yeezys recently, but this isn't about her. We're for his. This is about Chica <sighs> and and you know how talented she is. Yes. Um, I think when people really started paying attention is when Cardi B gave her a shout out. So Jermaine Dupree, famous in Atlanta for a few acts. You might know Criss Cross if you're a little older like us. Sure, sure. Or uh, Jermaine Dupree. Who did he make famous? Uh, Lil Bow Wow. Lil Bow Wow. <clears throat> <laughs> Little Bow Wow. That's all I'm going to say to you. <laughs> uh, and uh, The Brat, who I, I still listen to her music. So, yeah. So, that's, that's the guy who uh, made The Brat famous said, declared that all the current uh, female rappers are strippers. Mm. Whatever that's supposed to mean. But uh, Cardi B uh, deeply 
disagreed with him and named Chica as one of the uh, artists out now that does not uh, behave or perform like a stripper uh, when she does her music and um, she's right. Um, she is very lyrically talented. She's a monster. Um, not only does she rap, she sings as mm. well. She has a beautiful voice. She plays guitar. Wow. Um, cool. She most recently recorded a song. Um, it's called Can't Explain It with Charlie Wilson. That's big. Who's pretty much like the godfather of all this modern sound that you hear. In, the king of the comeback at the uh, time. <laughs> yeah. And all the modern sound you hear in hip-hop and R&B is due yeah. to Charlie Wilson. So she just recorded a song with him. Uh, we just want to uplift her. And as like a fellow young person, millennial from uh, Alabama, doing huge things, yeah. huge things. Uh, right now, so please go and follow her, support her, stream her music, mm -hmm. um, get her to the top because she belongs there. Honestly, Absolutely. honestly, she belongs there. Yeah. So shout out to you. You can follow her at Chicaology on Instagram and on Twitter. I don't know quite know how to say this, but I'm gonna spell it out for you at O R A N I C U H H. Please go follow her. One more She's time. Awesome. One more time. <laughs> at on Twitter <laughs> at. O R A N I C U H H. Okay. Sure. Chica. If I said that wrong and you see this, please correct me. Thank you. I'm not going to try at all. <laughs> no. All right. So the next part of Save It is what they talking about. And they are talking about a lot. So we're kind of going to backtrack and talk about some of the bigger things that happened in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Man of the hour. Um, the <laughs> so we'll start with the Baptist because that's <laughs> where he really made his first speech about um, about disparities within the entertainment industry, particularly within the film industry. So um, the BAFTA awards happened and you know he stood out as one of the many winners of that night because of the speech that he made. Mm -hmm. um, so the first time I watched the speech, I was really shocked that he yeah. took that stance. Although like Joaquin Phoenix has kind of been seen as like a uh, black sheep of the industry. Yeah, an outsider. Yeah. And kind of an outsider, mm -hmm. even though he's won Oscars before. I think he won <laughs> for uh, Walk the Line, where he played Johnny Cash. Cash yeah. He did a fabulous job playing Johnny Cash. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I was, like, impressed and and uh, thankful yeah. that he that spoke is, up. Yeah, yeah. Pretty bold. yeah, so, just to, you know, mention a few things that he said. Uh, one of the quotes is, um, but I have to say that I also feel conflicted because so many of my fellow actors that are serving don't have the same privilege. And he's talking about, in particular, white privilege. Right. Now, we cannot have an argument about whether white privilege exists or not, and we won't do that that, sh that this show. Mm -hmm. But the fact that he, as a white male cisgender actor, brought this to light kind of shows that maybe there is a little bit of white privilege that exists mm -hmm. whether you want to admit it or not so the fact that he brought that to light was i think i think is commendable how do you feel about it i'm going to say it uh it is white privilege it does <laughs> exist um i would say it. night shade will say it. um however you know um it it's in, in more ways than one, he is definitely, uh, he definitely used the focal point of the industry. Uh, you know, he didn't too, he didn't stretch with the Baptist uh, speech. He didn't go too far off the lines, but he definitely focused on something that we have, uh, you know, as as black as black creatives and just the industry. It's uh, I mean, news media itself has been talking about that there are so many times that black artists have been overlooked uh whether it's the grammys or even the oscars they have been overlooked uh and you know and and the reason why they're overlooked hasn't been answered um yeah. when it's undeniable 
that they, you know, that a lot of the artists that we have complained about in the past that should have won a certain, uh, you know, uh, um, award, whether, I mean, just to use a couple of examples, from, from the past on to now, I mean, uh, Denzel Washington with Malcolm X, uh, he, was, he was cheated out of that Oscar, I personally feel. Um, um, Angela Bassett and everything. Angela Bassett is just about everything. <laughs> Angela Bassett and um, everything. Will Smith with Ali. And uh, just recently, uh, Lupita with uh, being uh, snubbed, not even in a nomination for us. So um, how, how else are we supposed to feel about this? You know? Yeah. And he's basically saying what a lot of us, uh, white, black, orange, or red, that, know, that has any sense, that sees what's really happened have said he just put it out there live and in color for everybody to see here and choke on it as they did at the bathrooms yeah it was a lot of weird facial expressions in that audience yeah, uh when he was. made that speech it was from but i mean to uh I tell them off of what you were just saying another thing that he mentioned in his speech was no person of color was nominated mm -hmm in the best acting category and no woman was featured in the list of um, nominations for best director mm -hmm. so you know he put it out there that these things are happening <clears throat> there are several women who directed films this year that were really good films, really good films there yeah. were several cover, color, um, actors of color mm -hmm. that um had amazing performances and they kind of got looked over. Right. Not kind of got looked over, they get, did get looked Absolutely. over. Yeah. So, I mean, and the argument could be made that uh, their performances weren't up to par. Well, can you tell me exactly what about their performance wasn't up to your standards? Because like we said when we were talking on the last show about the Oscars, we hadn't seen a lot of the movies. Right. The problem is, it's a lot of the people that vote for these awards haven't seen a lot of these movies either. Hmm. Now we're not in the we're not in the academy or you know part of the BAFTA academy to be able to vote, but we were unbiased in our opinion, right. and I think that's not happening no. with these votes. No. They're very biased. No. Now, there are some years that they get it right. Um, I think the year the Moonlight won was a time where they, they did get it right. Moonlight was the superior film that year. I think this year, um, when Parasite won, we just recently watched Parasite, and it was phenomenal it was across the board. Very um, yeah. <laughs> my issue was that none of the actors got nominated. Right. Um, because I feel like, especially if you've seen the movie, The Father of the underprivileged poor family yeah. his performance was, was it was superb spectacular yeah. and also the son and in that daughter, family the daughter she was really everybody good. yeah everyone was, in the film did an amazing job acting and so for those um korean actors not to be recognized for their talent because i don't think you could have replaced replace them with just anyone mm -hmm. and had the same result is a travesty in my opinion right. um, because they put in the work and so that should be recognized right. um, so um, he also said Joaquin I think that it's we sent a very clear message to people of color that you're not welcome here um, and he said I think that the message that we're sending to people that have contributed so much to our medium and our industry and in ways that we benefit from um, and just go ahead and finish up what you're saying and then uh, let's see we've got two more quotes from him um, and he said this is not self-righteous condemnation and which again I appreciate because he realizes that he's benefited from the way yeah. things have been going too yeah. because I'm ashamed to say that I'm part of the problem he said adding that he has not done enough in his power to ensure that he uh, that the sets he works on are inclusive meaning that there are more than just white male men working on sets because women and people of color are very capable right. as we have seen in different films right. uh to be able to do the production side of things. And, and, and here's the thing, right? You, 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 
this is just, I mean, I, I, you're going to hear us do this a lot. The Black Panther, sorry. I know you're tired of us saying it, and we're going to continue to ride that horse because it's, I mean, this speech is just, it just, it just breaks us how, the magnitude of how big Black Panther was. The moves they made, the cast being majority black. Like, you never really, you haven't seen that before. A lot of the people that were you know, in production right. for the film right. were black right. and they won awards right. for their work. Right. Which means that we can do the work. Right. Exactly. So hire us. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And it's just, you know, it's a really, I, I'm, it's a really difficult situation to talk about. It's a very hard um, build a feel. However, it's it's about time, man. And it's not just about people of color. It's it's, it's women as well. It's across you the know, board. It's across the board that have that are that are treated that are that are mistreated that are not given their due. That's not given even the opportunity. I mean, things are changing now. Things are changing. I mean, you look at a lot of TV shows and you look at films and you know you're you're you know they're they're getting hired. You know, but you're like, okay, well, well they're getting hired now. But what what else do you want? for you to reward the ones that need to be rewarded. I mean, do what's right. If they're making great material, at least make it, at least put them in the competition. There are the same people that end up in the freaking Academy Awards every freaking year. If they put a movie out, I guarantee I'm going to see you, not going to you, going to see Brad Pitt, Tom Hanks, Anthony Hopkins, uh, Al Pacino, any one of them, if they end up in a film, not going to you, going to see them nominated somewhere. Somewhere, and I dare you to prove me wrong. It it just happens every time, you know. You could say, okay, well, what about Denzel? Yeah, you can. You can say Denzel, but Denzel is in the league of his own. Not many people can act at the level that Denzel acts. Not a, not a lot of people have the influence or charisma that Denzel has. Okay, he is in a league of his own, you know. But a lot of other uh, black actors do, do don't have the the privilege. That he had, they have the skill, and the even less black women actors. Absolutely, absolutely. Even less. So there are other actresses out there that do phenomenal work. Right. So don't continue to nominate the same five or six black women. Right. For stuff. Right. Just to say you've nominated a black woman. Right. Right. And stop nominating slave. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, let's move on. The last thing that Joaquin Phoenix said was, I think it's more than just having sets that are multicultural. Mm -hmm. I think we really have to do the hard work to truly understand systemic racism. Um, he uh, concluded with, I think that it is the obligation of the people who have created and perpetuated and perpetuate and benefit from the system of oppression to be the ones to dismantle it. So that's on us. Now he said that and we didn't. Mm -hmm. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> um, we, we can talk about it and talk about it, but honestly, we, we're not the ones that are in a position of power to change it. Now we can push through and make good content, but whether or not that content gets the uh the, the green light the yeah. green light the uh recognition that some of these other films have gotten then you or know they say the oscar nod the nod yeah. you know and it's gotten to the point where you know with oscar so white we've stopped kind of you know i, I think everybody every person of color is happy when they win but we stopped caring which is why the last couple of Oscar shows, the ratings have dipped. Right. Because for multiple reasons, but I think one of the strongest reasons is that we've stopped caring about the approval. Right. Now, we appreciate the recognition, but we've gotten to a point where we're tired. Right. And, and here's the thing. It's like, it's gotten to a point, like she said, that, you know, the Oscars not need to prove to validate your talent. Are validate if you make good material. I mean, 
they're, they're, I mean, critics do it all the time. And it's, it's, it, we've, we've gone back and forth about films we've watched. And, you know, Rotten Tomatoes or, or critics or whatever they call it, uh, they, they'll give it, you know, give certain films a 17 or a 70 or whatever it is. And then we watch it and we're like, uh... We watch a you, whole different movie what than we did. <laughs> So, and then and at know. the end of the day, that's really about personal preference, right. and like mm-hmm. sometimes personal preference is different. Right. Not to say that the film critics uh, or um, critique of film is unnecessary, because mm-hmm. I do think it's a necessary uh, skill. But you know, the difference of opinion is going to always win because you know if that movie makes a ton of money at the box office, love it, hate it, and different your opinion kind of is irrelevant. Right. And at the end of the day, we make films for the irrelevant. audience. And if the audience, uh, if the audience love it, like it, you know what I mean, and appreciate it, that's all that matters. Because, I mean, that's what we're doing this show for. Mm-hmm. That's why we're making future content for, for the audience, for, for you know, the ones that we care about and love to display not only talent, but also tell stories and, and change and affect lives. That's the whole reason why we're doing this. And I think a lot of artists are just basically just staying within that realm. Um, well, speaking of the Oscars, right. we want to run through um, a couple things that happened at the Oscars really quickly, and then we want to talk about a few of the winners very quickly. We're right. not going to keep you long because I know the last time we kind of like went to a tangent about everything that was happening with the nomination, but it was a justified tangent. Tang- right? Justified, I think. Yeah. Okay. I mean, but uh, first <laughs> of all. Well, let, let's start with Janelle Monae since she did open up the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, Janelle Monae performed a song called It's Time to Come Alive. Uh, she started out with uh, the theme song for Mr. Rogers, which was super adorable. Yeah, that was pretty cool. um, she gave Tom Hanks her hat, mm-hmm. and he looked very pleased yeah. to receive the hat. He was zooming at the <laughs> mouth. Him, him and his and wife were just like, oh, oh my God. God, it was so cute. They kind of fangirled over her. <laughs> and then she made everybody in the audience sing with her. Right. She put the She was like, y'all don't sing today. In, in Leo's today. face and made him sing, I... I stand. <laughs> I stand. She made everybody so uncomfortable, but at the same time, they were entertained. She got a standing ovation when she was done. Um, she called out, you know, all the wonderful women that directed films. Right. Um, you know, there was representation of not just the nominees, but all of the films that came out this past year. That kind of, and a few of them that got snubs, like I saw representation of us and my name is Dolomite right. and um, Midsummer. She did Midsummer, a little. Midsummer, yes, little, that was pretty cool that she that she had that uh, paid, kind of paid homage to. Paid homage yeah. to those films. And obviously the Joker, uh, Joker was up Joker there. Joker was yeah. up there and uh, Little Women. So mm-hmm. there was like representation from all the films up right. there, and it was like a really great performance. It was. It was I was, was very. Exactly. <laughs> Very, very impressive. She was pretty much the highlight. She highlighted that show. One of yeah, one, one of one the of many highlights. highlights of the show. Right. Um, they need to have her on every year. Right. Honestly. Right. Or every uh, other year just to just to keep it interesting. I mean, uh, we love Janelle on a yeah. she's like a modern day Renaissance woman, so you know, shout out to her. Absolutely. Um another thing that happened is I gotta do this one here. Oh, I'll let you take it away then. Um Eminem. <laughs> Perform it lose yourself seventeen years after he won. After he won. Woo. First off, first off, it was the the reaction of the crowd was epic. I mean, you had there were so many different reactions. <laughs> yes, I don't I mean. know if it was uh, on purpose, <laughs> but there were so many. So a lot of the people oh, that man. really enjoyed it were around, I guess, millennials right. and around I our age, age yeah. and like came up with Eminem right. and uh, and definitely remember and when were newbies, actually newbies in the game, were singing it probably to the top of their lungs. Those yeah. that were just actually that first or second time at the Oscars, you, you could tell like that was the song they listened to I to wake them to in the morning. Because <laughs> I was in, I was watching it and I was jamming and singing along to the oh, song yeah. Oh, yeah, too, too because you know like that's all came out. I was singing in high school, I yeah. think, when uh, 8 Mile came out. Mm-hmm. And I was junior or senior in high school. And so, yeah, that was like nostalgia for me. Yeah. Um, now, love him, love him or hate him, uh, I think he did a great job uh, performing. Uh, so, I, I want to I wanna talk about two reactions in particular. Um, 
One, Martin Scorsese. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going. Uh, uh, sir, he, sir, did you he, fall asleep? He's 97 years old. What, did he? Was he just blinking real yeah. hard, or did he fall asleep? That, he doesn't even count. I don't even get no. He doesn't look, man. He doesn't even probably. He don't care who Eminem is. He just. I, like I'm like, sure he you know, doesn't. I mean, he just like. But, okay, why is this guy on stage? Okay. I mean, yeah. was he tired? Because I mean, I mean, those award shows that whole day can be very long. <laughs> I can't. Uh, uh, and you, you know what? You got the audacity to talk about me with that guy, but it's okay. I, I mean, I'm not throwing shade. I honestly want to know what was going on. Was he? Uh, were he, you tired? He, he didn't care. He did not care about that particular side of the show. He probably didn't care about you that Monet, for example. I mean, he, I he, think he, uh, I think when they showed him in the audience, he looked like he was enjoying the performance. Mm. So I don't know. Maybe he didn't like Eminem. Well, I mean, some people don't like Eminem. I mean, it's 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 fair to say. Um, matter of fact, we the podcast I'm on this morning, Craig. Uh, hi, Craig. Hi, shout out, Craig. <laughs> what's, up? Craig. what's up, man? Uh, yeah, he's not a fan. He's not I, a fan. We had yeah, we had a conversation yeah, about that, and, and you know, arguably, like Eminem was kind of yeah. like the heightened version of NWA. Right. Uh, so I mean, <laughs> well, like I said. Love him or hate him, he did make a cultural impact. Mm. I mean, the word Stan right. comes from his song Stan. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Um, I mean, yeah. That, 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 that was kind of like the pop. I think that was the pop of the show, the fact that he just came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was definitely the pop of the show. Yeah. Um, another reaction I kind of want to touch on, which I didn't understand the reaction, and maybe I still don't understand the reaction. Billie Eilish. Oh. Eilish. Is she uh, like 12? Yeah, she's real young. She so young. she was looking at the stage and she kind of gave the stank face. Like, she did that several times throughout the night. But, and I was like, what? Maybe because she's 12. I mean, that, but then I heard that she had Tourette's. Oh. So maybe that's why her face looked like that. Oh, I feel bad. I'm sorry. Um, Seriously, she has Tourette's? Yeah, because at first I was like, um, girl. I mean, I think some of you. Some of you who know me personally and follow my Facebook page kind of saw that I made a post about her because <laughs> I yeah. didn't know. I've seen her on the internet yeah. and I've heard like maybe one or two of her songs and I was just like, who is she? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I, 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 I'm not, um, yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm but good. Maybe. Uh, shout out to her. I'm, I'm glad she's so popular. Right. Um, good. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> to the winners. So, so, uh, so for the winner's circle, let's run through these real quick. So, mm -hmm. Joaquin Phoenix won uh, for Best Actor for Joker. We called that one. We all knew he would. Yeah. Um, his speech this time around was a little, a little weird. I didn't catch the speech. I was back and forth. So, um, I you, mean, you were talking about this earlier. He, he, at first, he started along the same wavelength as the speech for the Baptists, mm -hmm. talking about he, he talked about racism and sexism and mm -hmm. uh, homophobia, and then he said speciesism, and I was like, mm, okay, let's see where he goes with this. And then he talked about how. Um, mothers and baby calves are separated from each other and the cries of the calves and the cries of the mothers which I mean also he did a Peter valid arguments but uh, comparing speciesism to racism it's two different spectrums <sighs> I, I, I just couldn't two, two I, he kind of lost me there I don't I uh I'm not a super duper animal rights advocate. Um, but we don't go around hurting no animals. You know I, what I'm I, don't, I don't purposely go out of my way to hurt animals. Right. I realize that like the way our animals. society is built, yeah. it's kind of hard not to hurt animals in the way because nothing that now is very rare that you find somebody who does ethical um, farming these days. Oh, nothing. Um, nothing's ethical. Everything is And then uh, when you do, yeah, when you do find people who ethically farm, it's very expensive whole foods. <laughs> <laughs> it's very expensive. So the, your average person can't afford to shop at Whole Foods all the time, but I digress. Um, um, so I get what he was saying, but it just didn't have the same oomph 
as the BAFTA speech for me, and that's all I'll say. He has a lot of uh, world uh, worldwide concerns or whatever. I mean, and that's 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 a, he's a, And I I, mean, I I I appreciate he's a, him right. He's addressing for everything, that. and that's fair enough. You know, I, no matter how weird or off kilter it seems, I mean, he's he's addressing it, and it's it's he's not wrong. I mean, it's a lot of things that's off and that's wrong in this world that you know we need to fix. But I mean. We could talk about it all day, but at the end of the day, you know, we got to put action to, to to actually change things. And that's one of the things we always talk about when it comes to just life and just, you know, just progressing, you know, and moving forward, you know. Yeah, we can um, talk about it, but what's next? Exactly. Um, moving on to the next, uh, you know, for Best Supporting Actor, Brad Pitt. I saw um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and it was funny as... It was funny, okay? I'm trying to watch my language. It was funny. And um, I can see. I can see how he won. Um, he did a good job. It was not Quentin Tarantino's best film. It was not. It was um, if Leo and Brad uh, and a few others were not in that film, uh, it would have suffered tremendously. I, I truly feel that they were the life of that film and what they were the ones that breathed life in that film and, and it did so well. Um, in regards to, you know, um, for me, I mean, in regards to just allow me to sit there and watch it. Because I sat there for and watched it, and I'm like, what is happening? And, and, and I mean, Quentin, he does a lot of weird stuff in his filmmaking. He really does. But he normally, and normally is caring about the story, but he was all over the daggum place. But the performances is what saved that film, in my opinion. It still was not his best film. Um, the numbers definitely proved that it didn't do well. I mean, 300 mil. To make it, you only pull 90, you do the math. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think you broke even, fam, but it is what it is. We, it, it's other things that contribute to that, mm -hmm. um, you know, and we'll talk about that another time. Uh, but Brad Pitt, I, I, I feel that he did a good enough job uh, to, to win it. I mean, um, I still haven't seen it, yeah. and I was still kind of disappointed Tom Hanks didn't win. Now, I haven't seen uh, the... Uh, Mr. Rogers movie, but I've seen enough of the previews and a few clips that I honestly thought he had it in the bag. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, Renee Zellweger wins Best Actress. Yeah, I Judy. think we, yeah. we both called that. Yeah. Um, so, congratulations to her. Mm -hmm. Laura Dern won Best Supporting Actress. You called yeah, it. Yeah. So, congratulations to her as well. I still haven't watched all of marriage story i started it but i haven't seen i haven't watched the whole thing yet so. well if you haven't watched the whole thing that says a lot so it's something missing for you not to watch it all the way through um i guess I, I think at the time my heart wasn't in it like i wasn't prepared to dive into the story mm -hmm. like i needed to okay. for me to appreciate it so okay. i'm gonna give it another shot okay. um you go ahead you do better at names than i am i'm not Ta better taika Ty Taika Watiti uh, <laughs> won Best Adapted Screenplay for Jojo Rabbit. Uh, shout out to him because I'm sure if he did uh, uh, Thor Ragnarok, yep. and that was so, so good and funny. It was, it was so the best Thor movie. I'm sure that Jojo Rabbit's good. And as soon as I find a way to watch Jojo Rabbit, I will because I am very interested to see what it's like. Yeah. Um, hair love. Yes. One best animated short. That yeah. was like the highlight for, for me. me. For me. Yeah, yeah. and well, I was like, this yeah. is one of the this is the one of the rare times that the Oscar gets it right. Yes. The Oscars get it right, and yeah. I was like, this movie deserved right. the win. <laughs> and he and uh, what's the guy, what's the guy's name? Um, Cherry. Cherry gave tribute to Kobe because Kobe a few years uh, a few years back uh, won the same for. Uh, Hello Basketball you know, with Best Animated Short. He won an Oscar for that. So for him being a former athlete as well, he was just paying homage to Kobe and, and, and just saying how that was he was inspired also to to move forward and make his animated animated film as well. And it's, it's I'm so happy. Yes. You know, it's it's awesome. It's good, man. It's it's really good. And on top of that, they brought with them a young man who had been discriminated because 
of his his hair, his hair. by yeah. his high school. He wasn't allowed to graduate, so they yeah. uh, honored him by bringing him to the Oscars right. with them, and that was beautiful to see. To so that man was able to celebrate in some way, right? Even though it's such a yeah, mm, we can't we get can't, into that because we we'll we go, yeah, we'll, we we'll keep talking. We, but, but you know, will. congratulations to we them will. and everybody that was involved with that. Mm-hmm. <sighs> congratulations because yes. I, I got emotional. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. And another instance of the Oscars getting it right a, a shocker, Bong Joon Ho mm-hmm. one. one all of it. He won everything for Parasite. Yep. So, best picture, best director, best foreign film, best original screenplay yep. with uh, his co-writer Han Jin Wan. Right. Um, Fun facts. So, he made history mm-hmm. being the second film with maker to win four Oscars in one night and the first director to win best picture with a foreign film. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as we said earlier, we both saw the film and it deserved every bit of the accolades that it has received. I mean, like, I'm I'm an anime fan and I love foreign martial arts films, like I told you guys in the first episode. So watching foreign films is nothing new to me and especially with, uh, you know, subtitles and that didn't bother me at all. Um, But my God, man. Like, it is the most, it is a beautiful film. And I'm not oh, just talking just, about, I mean, I don't want to just watch the Dagger movie. I mean, we don't it, want to give the story away, yeah, and you do need to go in the story with no knowledge of what, what's going what's on. Going on right, because yeah. that's the only way to really enjoy it. Because right. as I watched the film, I was like, oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, no, oh, oh, my God. Right. Yeah, it was, oh, it so was, It was awesome. And I mean, yeah. You're gonna hear me talk a lot about visuals. That visual, the, it was a spectacle, man. It was beautiful. The Just usage of color, the usage of light. It like, was ridiculous. I know, um, ridiculous. God, what's ridiculous. The, what was the war movie? Uh, 1917. 1917 won for best cinematography, and I'm sure it was beautiful. Yeah. And I think they used Rob. a continuous shot. Right, and uh, what's his name? Robert uh, Decker or something like that. Second year in the world winning. He's amazing for cinematographer, but uh, yeah, that's who was responsible for that. But uh, the cinematography in Parasite was just gorgeous. The yeah. colors. Yeah, man. That's, the color in that film. And lights. The lighting. It, 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 it was just a really, I mean, it was just a really good film. This, Go check it out, man. Like, yeah. Get over the fact that it's subtitles and watch it, man. You will not be disappointed. Yeah, and just... Uh, the difference in light, light and color. Yeah. When you're with the family that's kind of lower class and then the higher class family. Right. That contrast. Yeah. Top. top so nice. congratulations to you, sir. He thanked Martin Scorsese in his, in his uh, speech, mm. which I thought was interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, he probably inspired him. I mean, guy, I mean everybody, guy, he's inspired a lot so of many people. Filmmakers, you know? A he's lot just, of filmmakers. Just, so that's there's there's no surprise there that he was right. inspired. He can be by a jerk sometimes. I'm sorry, but he can be a jerk sometimes. Because it's just, I'm going to say it. I don't care. Because it's just like, you know, you, you've inspired a culture, a generation of filmmakers. Black, white, orange, green, yellow, red. Don't matter. You've, you're, you're, you've inspired so many freaking filmmakers. And you're a jerk. I That's mean, m- most of these guys have said some things that I don't agree with. Um, he has said some things. Spielberg has said some things about uh, some of the news films and filmmakers coming up that I don't agree with. And I'm yeah. frankly disappointed in because yeah. these are two men, uh, Spielberg more than Scorsese, yeah, yeah. but these are two men that uh, in the industry that I looked up to as filmmakers mm-hmm. and for them to say some of the things they have said is deeply disappointing. Uh, I'm going to say this so we can close it out, but the irony of it is what's more disappointing is that they experience the very same thing that they're doing to other filmmakers right now because here's the funny thing Myron Scorsese has experienced so many rejections so many disappointing, uh, uh, disappointing things within his filmmaking career, and I'm just like, dude, how can you even bring your lips to perk up to say the things that you're saying about, you know, about cinema and other other types of cinema and things like that? Like, re- people were when you first came into the big, your your films were not respected as they are right now. 
Mm-hmm. You were, because of your style, because of the things you were bringing to the table, things you were talking about, you were shunned. And it's amazing that you're doing the very same thing that was done to you. Wow. I just don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, we can get into it more, but we won't do that this episode. Yeah. We're going to move on to our last topic um, for uh, what they're talking about. And we just have to talk about the Google commercial. Oh, man. Right? The Black History Month commercial. Crazy. So when I watched uh, it, first of all, I was taken aback that Google took this stand. I was, right. Because Google yeah. has traditionally been um, a little iffy when it comes mm. to things, Grace. I mean, there were a couple of times yeah. where... If you Googled certain things, other things would come up. Um, we won't get into that because we could talk all day about yeah. that. Yeah. But uh, for them to kind of take this stand. So if you haven't seen the Google commercial, it basically goes through and says what the most Googled thing was. Right. Um, so it starts out with Beyonce right. and I'm in the hive. I'm not as crazy as some of these other hive members, but I am like a lower level hive member. There are <laughs> levels, believe, me, believe it or not. Like right. I have not been to a Beyonce concert, but I do. I have bought several of her CDs oh, and you know, I, I did stay <laughs> up and watch her Coachella performance when it came on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh yeah, I remember that. You stayed so, up all night watching it. Yeah, I stayed up. It she it was like two a.m. and yeah. I was in my room watching it. Did we have class that next day or something like that? Uh, or I had work the next day or when something. No, it was on the weekend. It was on Saturday. So yeah. So uh, never mind. You didn't have to work. I, no, I didn't have to work. Mm. Uh, sure. No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, <laughs> so it started out, and that was the performance that was the most googled her homecoming performance. Right. Um, which if you haven't watched it. It's on Netflix. Uh, she made a documentary about it. It is if you if you've ever been to a black football game and watched the halftime shows, yeah, man. if you have ever HBCUs, seen man. a step show from mm-hmm. a black Greek organization, yeah. um, it's altering, man. if you it's if you know someone who has ever been to an HBCU. Or if you have been to an HBCU yourself, like my dad graduated from Jackson State Mm -hmm. University and he would take us to the games and it just, it took me back to that time when we went to the games and listened to the bands and everything. So she, it was, yeah, that's what it was. It was was definitely that. Beyonce. That was crazy. Uh, I mean, that, I mean, they had Prince. Prince was the most searched guitar solo right i mean and and the list goes on i mean we can uh, <laughs> what we appreciate uh especially as a culture is that they're that they were like you know hey this is what the world is saying you know this is what the world likes this is what the world loves and you know it's, it's a it's a it's a warming uh thing to uh to see that such a Media, you know, you know, Mongol, you know, am I using the proper word? Mobile. Mobile. I said Mongol. Is that like, is that like, uh, I don't know. Is that like a, uh, what do they call them, like a, a barbarian or something? I don't, shh, no, that that like, would be, no, like no. The Hans Let's or move something? On. I think that was like the Hans, what I just Moving said. Moving on, moving on. No, uh-huh. like, uh, the Mongols, media Mongols, and just, I mean, them being as, as high up as they are, as they are, and just, it just, Putting that and using their platform to just show that that is a beautiful thing, and uh, it's just keep the ball rolling, man. Because and and appreciate because there's so many people, so many celebrities that 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 they gave recognition to this and was just like LeBron James, Serena Williams, just taking it, yeah, right, just taking it back. Like, whoa, did they just do this? My Angelou, right, yeah, my Angelou. Like, these are all the people that was that RuPaul. was in the commercial RuPaul. Yeah, I mean, this the contributions that you know black entertainers and black athletes have contributed to the world the world man and it's just you know thank you google thank yeah you. Thank i mean for making something that was so beautiful you know what i mean and i mean also some of some of those searches might have been in uh angst but <laughs> love us or hate us you google us yeah you google <laughs> and you press enter and search whatever they call it all right <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> Hey, your searches for don't lie, baby. Don't <laughs> lie. 
<laughs> okay, and then uh, one of the things they also mentioned that the most Googled movement was the civil rights movement. Yeah, I mean it's just so it's just so many on so many questions people have and just curious, you know curiosity, man. Everybody, yeah, you, you, well, what this and what? Yeah, you want to know, and then when you find out, you're all you all freaking like shell shop. Oh, it was real. My grandmother, God rest her soul, man. She actually marched. She marched, and she had, uh, you know, she had a fear of dogs because of that march. She was a, a dog attacker. You know, she wasn't harmed, but they basically, you know, unleashed a dog and made a jump at her, and it scared. It, it she to this, to, you know, before you know, she passed on us, and uh, she's missed dearly. You know, she, you know, she was terrified of dogs, and just to see that. You know, the fear in her eyes when there, uh, when a dog would come by, she would grab me, and just to show that that certain things have impacted people after so many years, and um, you know, it, it's it's the civil rights movement, man. It's it's it's, it's more than just a, a search. It was it's 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 affected so many people, and to this day, you know, down the line, you know, the stories have been told. You know, if you have a grandparent that has experienced that, you need to listen to them you know, understand and acknowledge, uh, you know, their experiences because, you know, I, I was blessed enough to hear the stories and to hear the things and it hurt my heart to know that they had to go through that and it was, it was, it was scary. It's, it's scary to know that that existed. Um, and man, I mean, we, we have our complaints about things now, but imagine what they went through. My God, I mean, it's it's on a different level. I mean, my folks were from Mississippi, mm. and quite as it's kept, Mississippi was worse yeah. than Alabama. People were actually afraid to come to Mississippi. Yeah. Um, that's where they shot Maker Evers um, in, his front yard. in his front or on his porch in front of his wife and children. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the things that and some some of the things that are happening now are a little bit reflective of what's happening then. Yeah, I think. At some point, we need to just learn from our past mistakes right. and really and honestly and truly try to move on and do better and be paid better never as a society. But never forget, man. Never forget. I think that was a little bit of what Joaquin was touching on mm -hmm. that, you know, change can be made if the people, the right people decide that they're going to stand up and make those changes. Absolutely. And that's what it's going to take. That that action. That action. That action that, that follows those words. Everybody can say they want to change and do this and do that, man. But what are you doing? To move on to our next segment, which is the review. The review. Here we go. And so in the review, um, this time around, since it is Black <laughs> History Month, mm -hmm. February, the shortest month of the year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, every day should be Black History Day. Like, I, you know... Try to learn something about different. I try to learn something about different culture every day of the year, mm -hmm. um, whether it's my own culture or someone else's culture that I don't know about or understand. Right. I try to learn from every culture. So I think, in keeping with that mind frame, you know, if you don't know something about like history, research it, and you know, find find out some more because it's not just our history; it's everybody's history. And I mean, and here at Black and Shade, man. Black History is like it's no Black History Month with us. It's Black History forever. Like we always mm -hmm. learn about our culture. I mean, even with this here, we had to do the research, and we, mm -hmm. we knew of these individuals, of these great men, but we did not know the impact that mm -hmm. the the full magnitude, the impact that they've had on this city as a whole. And uh, you want to lead into your first, the first guy we have? Yeah. So uh, Reverend Shuttlesworth, Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth. Um, if you've ever been to the airport, it's named after him. Yeah. And the airport in Birmingham is named after him. Mm -hmm. um, so he made many contributions to the civil rights movement yeah. um, and was a big presence in this city. city. Mm -hmm. um, and he actually he moved away to Chicago because, uh, because of certain attacks that happened to him. Right. I think the KKK actually tried to blow his house up. So he moved to Chicago and he continued to do his work there, but then he came back to Birmingham and lived out the rest of his days. So rest in peace to him. Right. Um, so uh, Dr. King was quoted as saying that Shulsworth was the most 
courageous civil rights fighter in the South. And that's a big deal coming from Martin Luther King Jr. If he said that about him, you have to know that this man uh, risked life and limb uh, so that we can have the rights that we have today. And we just want to say thank you to him. And I know some of his family members are still living here in the city. Mm -hmm. So if you ever happen to see this uh, on behalf of uh, us, uh, from you to uh, to you and to him, thank you for what you've done. Yeah. Um, so a little background on him. Um, he became a minister after earning a bachelor's in art at Selma University and a bachelor's in science at Alabama State College, which is now Alabama State University. Yeah, sure. um, he was an active participant in sit-ins and the Freedom Rides. Um, he was a co-founder of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and he helped organize the March for Voting Rights from Selma to Montgomery. Um, so, again, he did so much. And so the sit-ins, I, I know me, and I don't know if I could have done that. I, I couldn't. Um, because, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, well, even with all the strong opinions I have, I'm a big crybaby. So I don't know if I would have been able to handle that. Um, I cry too, but I've been crying and swinging. That's what I want to do. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, but you know, that, I, and I'll jump to side, man. I mean, uh, uh, it's, a, it's an unfortunate fact that I found out about Reverend Shuttlesworth. Um, during one of the sit ins of marches, I believe it was, he had his teeth knocked out. Wow. He had his teeth knocked out of his mouth, and they interviewed him, and he was out there bleeding out of his mouth with no teeth. The front, uh, the front few of his teeth knocked out, and um, you know he went and got a got you know got went to the doctor and had it looked at, and he was right back out there the next day. Yeah. That's the type of person. He's a warrior, man, and uh, a warrior, and just a a man of God that was just adamant about standing up and pushing through the the adversity of receiving something that should have already been, you know. Ours, you know, which is it was nice. ours, right? Um, but we were uh, denied, it, denied, right? right. Yes, on, on many occasions, on many occasions, mm-hmm. and then the freedom rides, and uh, you know, also I just want to shout out to the uh, to the supporters and advocates mm-hmm. that were uh, not people of color that right. contributed, right? Uh, because on those freedom rides, there were not only black people on those buses but there were white right, people yeah. too that took just as many beatings right. and whose life was just as much in danger as the black people that were on that bus just because they chose to ride that bus together in uh unity with us so i also want to uh shout those people out because Absolutely. if it wasn't for them also so, yeah. we wouldn't be able to do the things that we do now right. so thank you and this is what walking again what walking was talking about taking ownership of some of the things that have happened and uh, really standing firm and making a change. So, you know, just to those men and women that uh, made those contributions, you know, thank you for that as well. A uh, quick digression, uh, Miss Judy. Uh, Miss Judy Truitt, mm-hmm. that's her name. She's actually one of the advocates here in the city right now that has uh, been contributing uh, to the uh, you know black community, uh, mm-hmm. was it the um, uh, white Alabamians for Black Lives Matter? Right. Yes. Um, and, um, that was a we we did a film uh, a few years back on uh, her contribution, and um, she goes out with uh, with her faithful few, as I would call them, and uh, you know people would join in occasionally, and she would be uh, she was, she's normally out there at uh, uh, Kelly Ingram, yeah, Kelly Ingram Park. Sometimes and, she's at Railroad. She's right. gone to Avondale. Right. Um, yeah, so, and she worked with the movement uh, back in the uh, late 60s right. and uh, 70s mm-hmm. as well. And uh, she's an older white lady that, you know, she's uh, down for the cause. Right. And so uh, I appreciated that, um, right. that she's still in the fight. Right, yeah. I thought that was noble and, and very admirable to know that she was doing this. And, uh, you know, and just a sweet person. And she made a joke. Um, uh, when we were interviewing her, as she said that you know people would say you know some, some foul things to her at times, but you know she would she would always say something sweet back to them like you know you're just as welcome to join us, you know or just come talk to us if you want to know what this is about you know and it was just amazing that you know someone 
you know, that is willing to go out there and even endure, you know, the harshness of what people uh, can be and do to you in regards to standing up for what's right, you know. So big ups to Miss Judy. Yeah. Hi, Miss Judy. <laughs> um, so uh, next we're going to talk about uh, um, A.G. Gaston. Mr. A.G. Gaston. Uh, okay, so Mr. A.G. Gaston was an entrepreneur. Uh, here in the city of Birmingham. Uh, his contributions to the civil rights movement to Birmingham well, when the, NC, uh, the NAACP was outlawed in 1956. Uh, he worked uh, on several occasions with Reverend Shuttlesworth. Uh, they, he, when Reverend Shuttlesworth started the uh, Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights, um, uh, Mr. Gaston supplied offices for the groups to hold meetings. Um, uh, a couple of his uh, entrepreneurial endeavors that he um, that he you know started here, which is still here to this day, which I didn't know, what I thought was pretty amazing, is that he started the uh, Smith and Gaston Funeral Home, the Booker T. Washington uh, Business School. Uh, I don't know if that still existed, but at the time it was time, used to educate uh, those to uh, you know young black men and women to you know learn about business to get clerical jobs and things of that such. Uh, the Citizens Federal Savings and Loan Association, uh, at the time was one of the first black-owned financial institutions in Birmingham. Uh, he uh, sponsored black groups and he started the BTW uh, uh, Broadcasting Services and the radio stations WENNWIN -E -E uh, -E FM and WAGGAM, which still exists today to play gospel music. Uh, Booker T. Washington Insurance Company, uh, which is a still existence, I believe, and the AG Gaston Motel in uh, Birmingham. I mean, this wow. man... Wow, what a laundry list. Was a monster. Of accomplishments for mm -hmm. a black mm -hmm. man at that time. I mean, that's just so inspiring. I just kind of wish that our our community had continued in that in that uh, tradition of uh, owning and starting our own businesses that yeah. that are made specifically for us. And there are people, you know, there are people in Birmingham that do have a, a lot of businesses that they're running and everything. I just think somewhere between the civil rights movement and, you know, the end of the civil rights movement, we kind of stopped. Yeah. Um, and I wish we had continued. And so, some of that was like integration. Mm -hmm. um, which you can make your arguments for. Um, when we integrated, we kind of stopped making things for ourselves, right. which I think was a travesty. Right. Um, but uh, like I said, you can have your arguments about what you know, whether or not you know that particular thing actually helped us or harmed us. Right. But at the same token, like he was able to do these things. So if he was able to do that in that time period where it was harder. Yeah. You definitely can do it now. We can definitely do it now, which was kind of the reason why we started the show. We started, we started our production company right. because we wanted to fall in the same vein as the people that came before us. Exactly. And, I mean, just, you know, here's the thing about being, you know, black owned and things. Like, this is not saying that we're just isolating ourselves, you know, from right. everyone. It's just saying having pride to say that we have ownership of something. Right. And, uh, you know, I've always been told my grandfather, you know, he's a business owner. He's a black business owner here in the city. Uh, you know, he owns the town of country furniture store out there First Avenue. We also own the roadside barbecue out there First Avenue, North and East Lake. And watching him is has been an inspiration. And my grandfather was around doing Edgy Gaston time, and so was my you know, my dad used to tell me stories about Edgy Gaston all the time. The impact of, of Edgy Gaston has has you know f impacted so many people in so many ways, and like I have the pride of being a black entrepreneur. We have the pride of being mm -hmm. black entrepreneurs. Like she was saying, you know, that's why we're, you know, building this production company and so many other things that we're going to be, you know, putting our hands into because we, we know that only action is going to create change. Like we can talk all day. We can, we can, you know, fuss and argue, whatever you want to call it all day. But until you put the, the metal to the road and actually, uh, step out and, 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 and put those words into actions, none of it really matters, you know? Right. Um, so the last thing, um, no, this was your thing. Oh, you want me to go? I yeah, this is your okay. last, this is the last okay, the piece last of question. information about A.B. Gadsden. Well, wow, she always takes it, so I thought she was going to take it. <laughs> Continue it. Uh, uh, so during the uh, civil rights movement, the AG Gaston Motel, um, which is actually what is it being? Is it being renovated? Or something it is like being that? renovated. Right. It's uh, it was a safe haven 
uh, for civil rights meetings. Um, when Dr. King was uh, was arrested in 1963, um, you know, here in Birmingham, uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Jackson was the one that uh, you know posted his bond. And I think his bond was about 5K at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but he took that out of his own pocket and he bailed uh, Dr. King out. Dr. King and Ralph. Um, I, I forgot. Abernathy? Abernathy. Um, I think he was a minister too, right? I believe so. Right, Reverend Abernathy. They both, he both bailed them out um, out of prison. Uh, and like I said, that, that that was just the type of person that uh, A.G. Gaston was. And he really, he, he, he didn't like the sit-ins. He didn't like the marches. He wanted to try to handle it and like he handled business. He wanted to try to, you know, negotiate and try to maneuver things uh, so that, you know, men and women didn't have to suffer and receive the beatings and things. But, you know, apparently, you know, what he was trying to do wasn't enough. Um, but it was admirable and it was respected and his reasoning for what he was trying to do was respected. So, um, you know, big, big ups to, to A.G. Gass and his the Gass and family, you know, uh, it's a legacy beyond legacy. Um, last thing I'm going to say about um, Mr. Gasson is that he was considered one of the richest, uh, either one of the richest or the richest black man in Birmingham. Uh, first black bi- uh, millionaire, I think, in Birmingham, I believe. Amazing. Um, Amazing um, within itself and um, a gentleman that isn't mentioned enough. So you see the name Gaston is his. That's that's what we're talking about. Uh, Smith and Gaston, you know, Booker T. Watch, Church Company, et cetera, et cetera. That is all Mr. A.G. Gaston. So, yeah. Yeah. Two wonderful, amazing men from right here in our own city that yeah. made such a huge impact, right. not only on uh, the black community and our culture, but the world. Absolutely. Okay, so we've talked about two major players in the civil rights movement, and yeah. now we kind of just want to talk about the civil rights movement, the impact then and now. We touched on a little bit, bit of this a little bit earlier when we were talking about um, uh, Fred Shuttlesworth and A.G. Gaston and, you know, black business ownership and, uh, you know, integration and how it affected our community. So, um, we talked about, um, so Birmingham is considered the home of the civil rights movement as a whole because a lot of the bigger things that happened within the movement happened in Birmingham. Mm-hmm. Um, not, not only Birmingham, but Montgomery and Selma as well. Right. Um, so all the sit-ins, the bus boycotts were in Montgomery, all the marches, the marches from Montgomery, uh, Selma to Montgomery, um, a lot of things uh, happened here. And I think uh, Dr. King picked here, no, well, he picked here because he felt like this was one of the areas with the most racial tension, right. one of the areas. Um, fun fact, real quick, mm-hmm. he also picked Chicago but Chicago shut everything down and pretty much gave him what he wanted because they saw what was happening down in the South and um, Chicago, Illinois did not want that reputation. Right. Um, I learned that um, working with the uh, Woodlawn Project, oh, wow. uh, David okay. Dada uh, is uh, head of that project, shout out to him, mm-hmm. where um, he takes kids from Chicago and kids from Birmingham and have them kind of meet and converse with one, each, uh, one another since uh, there's a Woodlawn in Chicago and so there's a Woodlawn in Birmingham and so those kids get together and talk about their experiences and so that was something that I learned that I didn't know. Hmm. Um, so that's I think that's an interesting yeah. black history fact right. to share. Um, Definitely. Um, pivotal players. Uh, we just mentioned Dr. King. Mm-hmm. Um, Robert Shuttlesworth. We just mentioned him. We just mentioned A.G. Gass. Of course. Both the parts. Uh, the Freedom Riders and the list that. there's so long with them. And then uh, you have Miss Joanne Robinson. Um, you know, these individuals are, you know, um, like major players within this state alone. Um, you know, the actions they took within this state to just, you know, kind of kind of blaze a trail of, you know, uh, of change. Um, unfortunately, that trail um, was laced with blood, you know, um, in pain and agony and, uh, you know, so many things that has, has happened and so many sacrifices that were made, um, and, and, you know, just to, just to fight for something that should have already been a God given right. Um, and something that we take for granted, um, 
more often than not, you know. Um, you not know. only a God given right, but just a human right in general. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Because at the end of the day, we're all humans. Right. So the fact that we had even had to fight this hard for just basic human rights and decency, right. I think is tragic. Right. Um, I mean, and, and leading on, I mean, like the whole purpose of, of what, what you know, the civil rights movement and Dr. King and Reverend Shuttleworth and so forth, all these individuals coming down and just uh, basically attacking, I guess you would say, a mecca of, of racism, um, you know, uh, the objective was to desegregate the state of Alabama and, as, you know, as well as the South and then Jim Crow. Unfortunate history of ours is uh, Bull Connor, you know, mm -hmm. the chief police, chief of police at that time. Um, I mean, he... I mean, he created so much hell and havoc. I mean, George Wallace, uh, former governor of the state, uh, you know, standing standing in the doors of the University of Alabama, like literally standing in the doors of the University of Alabama, preventing uh, young black men and women from entering the, the university. I mean, that was the things, man, that, um, you know, um, we as a people should not forget, but also um, understand where, you know, what was sacrificed and how far we have come, you know. Um, I just think it's funny that, like, right at the end of his life, he asked for forgiveness. Oh, yeah. Uh, which means that he knew on some level that he was wrong. Absolutely, yeah. So, I, I mean, I just think... I, I couldn't imagine what he went through. Um, you know, um, it's hard for me to have pity for him, you know, or uh, however... Um, you know, your conscious man, it will destroy you. Um, when you're doing wrong and when you're not, you know, when you when you blatantly hurting and destroying lives, and God knows what he's, you know, what he's covered up and what he's done, him and Bull Connor, uh, the men and the women that have, may have been beat, murdered, or whatever. Uh, you know, it's just, I mean, being in the position that they were in, they had the power to to stop all of this. Right. That, you know, and you ask for forgiveness, okay, fair enough, you know. Um, that's not my place to say whether I can or can't or whether my, you know, my grandparents can or can't or great-grandparents can or can't. Um, you know, at the end of the day, when we live our lives, you know, whatever you believe or don't believe, you got to report to somebody at the end of the day. Yeah. When your life is over, you're going to have to condone, or excuse me, not condone, atone for what you have done in life. Um, I don't care what you believe. Uh, I think, um, you know, we all have to pay the bill of, of the life we live. And the, bill it, comes the, the, the bill comes due. The bill comes due. By the irony of that statement, right? Um, <laughs> any, uh, uh, Dr. Strange Dr. Strange friends. friends. There you go. Just yeah. to, we had to lighten the mood just a minute because it was getting a little heavy and a little dark. But, um, yeah. yeah um, I just... Uh, what is with this one? This last, you, 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 you speak a lot on, on voters' rights and things that such. Yeah, so, okay, so if we do not learn from history, we're doomed to repeat it. And this is not a long history. Mm. Like, I mean, a lot of people like to talk about how slavery was 200 years ago and, you know, everybody is free and slavery mm. doesn't exist. Well, it does exist, but that's a whole other show. Right. It does and, still exist. And I, and I want to say something. I don't care if it was 7,000 years ago. Slavery is slavery. Okay? Slavery is slavery. Wrong is wrong. Quit using time as a mechanism or an excuse to say get over something. No. No. Understand. No. We will not get over it. No. We will not forget. Because that is something that you do not do to other human beings. No matter what their race is. Okay. And for those that are out there that want to make the statement of as 200 years ago, how about your people be put in chains? How about your people be condemned for no apparent reason and taken from what they know? I'm going to digress. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, we got a little, get a little emotional, but it's hard not to because here's the thing. It's like the effects of slavery were still felt even after um, the emancipation proclamation was written by um, uh, President Lincoln um, because you know even after that we uh, you know our our people did not have full rights right. and we just attained them 
a little over 50 years, years ago, ago. Yeah. a couple of years ago, um, the Civil Rights Movement um, celebrated its 50th, 50th year. Um, the fact that we have parents and grandparents that are alive to remember all of that, yeah. everything that happens, yeah. the marches, the dogs, the yeah. beatings, the maimings, the lynchings, yeah. you know, people being murdered right. um, on their on their front porch in front of front of their family, right. the fact that that hasn't been that long ago, uh, large groups of white people screaming at a five year old baby trying to go to school and get an education, right. the fact that that wasn't that long ago that, that people are uh, Ruby Bridges is still alive, y'all. Mm -hmm. She's not and she's like uh, in her late forties, early fifties. She's still alive. Um. Uh. Well. Our uh, early fifties. Um. Yeah. She's still she's alive. alive. <laughs> it's the point <laughs> right. that I'm trying to make. <laughs> right. So that wasn't that long ago. So, um, just as an example of how far we've come, but how how we still aren't, you know, fully learning from from the mistakes of the past. The Voting Rights Act of 1965. Mm -hmm. So all that's left of that act is Section 2, where it says that you can explicitly discriminate against someone um, uh, because of their race and prevent them from voting. Mm -hmm. So that's all that's left. Um, Section 5 was repealed um, following the lawsuit that happened in Shelby County mm -hmm. a, a couple of years ago, which is the county that I live in. Um, and Section 5 was, uh, you know, the states now don't have to get approval from the government if they make any kind of changing, changes where voting is concerned. Now, the problem with this is, is that because this case was won, now if a state wants to implement some kind of rule that kind of gets around the second section mm -hmm. where they can't directly you know, discriminate against you and say, no, because you're black or because you're Asian or because you're Latina or Hispanic, because that has become a big deal now. Right. They can't directly say because of your race, you can't vote. But now that's giving them the room and the space to, to make, make indirect laws right. that make it more difficult for you to vote. Wow. Goodness so. Gracious. For example, uh, when they cleared the voter registration, uh, they started clearing the voter registration law rolls. Yeah. So if for any reason they feel like you uh, don't belong there, right. uh, they'll take you off the roll. And they won't check to see, because their excuse is, oh, well, we have people voting with dead people's identities, which does not happen as often as, as you it, think it right. does. And, you know, this is to prevent cheating. Well, the problem is they're not going to actually check to see that the people that they're erasing from these roles uh, are cheating. They're just taking them off. Right. Um, and then they've made it harder for you to get IDs to be able to vote. So, for example, in poorer areas uh, and more rural poorer areas, they've shut down several of the places where you would go to get your state ID. So now you have to drive miles and miles away to be able to get your state ID so you can right. vote and do other things with a state because everybody needs a state ID uh, whether you're going to vote or not. Right. So I just, it's really frustrating to me that this has happened and it was allowed to happen and then I live in the county that it happened in, that the lawsuit happened in. Um, it's just... Uh, I feel like we're kind of regressing in some ways. I mean, in a lot of ways, we've made great strides, like Nightshade has said. But in other ways, I feel like we're pulling back and regressing. Mm -hmm. And um, it could be blamed on multiple things, and we won't get into reasons why. And but it's a strategic onslaught to it's, control, keep to maintain control. I, I mean, we feel like that. Mm -hmm. Now we all we said in the first show we weren't going to get too political, but you know what? Like, here we are. You can't avoid it. Right. I mean, we have to talk about these things. And right. if you disagree, let us know in the comments. Give us your opinions right. because as long as you're respectful Absolutely. and as long as you're coming with with research, do your own research as always. Um, don't just go on what we're saying, but do your own research mm -hmm. and look into this stuff yourself. 
but we have to have these conversations mm -hmm. because if we don't talk and do it in a respectful manner, you don't have to have a, a conversation with someone and it turn into like this drag out, knock down fight about mm -hmm. who's right and who's wrong. Right. If we look at the the honest to goodness facts and we and we use the history of what happened what happened in this country yes, as the background yeah. it's, it's we something. we should be able to talk about this right yeah. i mean it, it just takes maturity and, and intelligence i mean anybody that can come and make comments about something you know without knowledge uh is obviously a, an unintelligent person you know what i'm saying and i mean we are you know we're here um you know as a team as a duo you know as an entity to you know uh, open that line of discussion not just with you know friends and family that are watching but also though you know those outside of that because you know we, we feel that there's so many so many um uses of media in the wrong way um and we want to be one of those ones that talk about the things that are hard talk about the things that, you know, are a bit uncomfortable uh, in a more positive, you know, uncomfortable uh, environment, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's this, this, this discussion about the history of Birmingham, uh, formerly known, unfortunately, as Bombingham because of the 16th Street uh, Baptist uh, Church bombing and, and several other bombings of, of, of you know, significant uh, civil rights uh, members, houses and things of that such. I mean, it's just things like this is very uncomfortable, man. I mean, it, it is, it's hurtful for the black community to, to remember and even talk about. And, and I'm pretty sure for the white community, those that, that, are, that are good people and that care, it's hard for them to, to wrap their mind around that, you know, that this happened. I'm pretty sure. I mean, we've met individuals. I mean, we just talked about Ms. Judy. I mean, she puts herself out. She's been a part of, you know, the, the civil rights movement and to this day even contributing in her own way. So, I'm, you know, she's, she's an example of those individuals that care and want to, you know, make a difference and, and exploit the things that are wrong. And you have those out there in, in upper echelon media that's doing that. And, you know, uh, Trevor Noah, for, uh, for example, he's a comedian, but yet, you know, he speaks some truth a lot of truth. He used comedy to, uh, he used comedy to basically uh, uh, lower, uh, lighten the sting, but at the same time, I mean, it's undeniable the things that he talks about, and it's, um, it's, it's, it's something that we need to make sure that we pay attention to. All right, and so the last thing we'll talk about in um, this section, uh, the review, is that we mentioned before that the Gadsden Hotel is being renovated and remodeled because it's going to be a part of the Birmingham Civil Rights National Monument. Mm -hmm. So that kind of starts in uh, Washington, D.C. And if you haven't been to it, um, if you get the chance to go to D.C., definitely go to yeah. the monument. It's beautiful. Um, my sister lives in D.C. Um, and so when I visited the last time, we went to see it and it was really cool. Um, and uh, I haven't been to the African American uh, Civil Rights Museum or the African American um, History Museum, uh -huh. but the next time I go to DC, I'm definitely going to that because I've heard just amazing things about it. Um, so the hotel will be a part of that trail. So it starts, I think, in Montgomery. Mm -hmm. There's some uh, there's some monuments that are already down there, and then it's going to go up through uh, Birmingham, and I think there's uh, some things that are happening in Tennessee as well. Oh, so wow. I think it's going to go all the way up to Washington, D.C. Um, so one of these days, when I have time and money, I'll probably do the whole monument and just take the whole trail and just learn about all the history. But that's, I think that's, that's, that's amazing, amazing. and yeah. it's uh, going to be like an amazing tribute to Mr. Gadsden's honor to have his hotel remodeled and, you know, kind of made new. That's a potential show idea. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we shouldn't be talking about show ideas during the show. I'm just but saying. But in the not? future, yeah, we could, we, we could probably do that, do a road trip show. So in. if you if you think that's a good idea, let us know in the comments, yeah. and uh, we'll try to make it happen. For sure. Um, but yeah, so the review this time around, it was very kind of heavy. But, you know, we're, and we, and we want to do subjects like this because we feel like it's important not only to us as black 
people but to everybody because again like i said at the top of this this isn't just our history it's everybody's history and we feel like we need to you know kind of get the word out so if there are some things that you heard here that you didn't know about um let us know in the comments um give us your uh take on what we talked about uh, we did get a little political this time around and that's going to happen it's from time happen. to time it's because we can't not talk about these subjects without getting a little bit political right. so um yeah just talk to us let's have a conversation count your blessings we ain't talked about trump yet we probably won't i don't really want to <laughs> <laughs> i don't really want to talk about that hey fair enough i mean it's, it's um, all good man. to be honest because that's <laughs> I don't really want to. I'll just leave it at that. I will leave it alone. Okay, guys. Um, I guess it's time. It's time for the last section last of section our, of our show, show. Get lifted. which uh, it yeah. might be a little heavy as well. Heavier, man. Heavier. Um, this has been a heavy show, man. Yeah, it's been kind of heavy. Yeah. It's been kind of... But I hope you've enjoyed it. But um, we are using our Get Lifted section to... Honor the memory of uh, Kobe Bryant. Kobe. Um, yep. Not just Kobe Bryant, but his daughter his Gianna, daughter and Gianna, as well and as the families and, and the and, other victims yeah. and coaches that lost their lives in that very tragic and very sad um, helicopter crash. Um, we just want to give uh, our all of our love to the Bryant family and all the other families that lost someone I couldn't imagine um, being Vanessa Bryant and losing uh, a husband and a daughter in the same breath. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Kobe Bryant is a, he was a very complicated um, individual. Mm -hmm. um, he was not perfect. He made major, huge mistakes. Um, mm -hmm. and just like everybody else does. Um <clears throat> Because I know I'm not perfect, and I've made huge mistakes that I regret deeply. Um, I know Nightshade can say the same. But at the end of the day, he was still a man and a human, and someone who loved his daughters and his wife and his family. Um, and he was a, a great basketball player. Um, he became a great, he learned from his mistakes and tried to be a better person. Um, towards towards the end. I mean, he was still very young, but he tr uh, he really tried to change um, his ways, and um, I think that's the point. That's the point of being a human. Is like you make mistakes and you fall, and you uh, get back up, and you learn from your mistakes, and you try to do better mm -hmm. as you go on on through life. And as long as you're at really trying to do better, I think that's that's the biggest thing to take away from his life and his legacy. Um, so rest in peace to him and to Gianna and all the other victims. And we just kind of want to leave you with a quote from him. Um, I'm going I'm to I'm say the quote in a minute, but uh, I know I'm kind of digressing. Bear with me. Um, uh, Kobe Bryant, man. Um, <laughs> love hate relationship because I, I was one of those ones that was like, man, you know, I, I, I can't stand Kobe, you know, because he was just so good. Mm. It was just so good, and it's just, um, I wish I could have met him, I really do. Because one thing about Kobe Bryant, um, just as Lilac was saying, is that he. He changed. He evolved. Um, after, you know, the incident of, you know, the misfortunate uh, decision that was made and the mis misfortune that fell upon him, he had a choice. And he could have either uh, risen to the occasion or he could have fallen and, and succumbed to the, the pressure uh, of failure. And, uh, but Kobe Bryant... Uh, you know, he he was much more, so much more than just, you know, a basketball player. He was, uh, 
you know, his father, he was a, he was a, a husband, he was a, a fighter uh, in more ways than one. And, um, you know, it was, it's just so sudden that, 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 that this happened. And I'm just going to go into the quote. And it, 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 he, it says, um, and this is one of his final quotes. He said, there's a choice that we have to make as people, as individuals. If you want to be great at something, there's a choice you have to make. We all can be masters at our craft, but you have to make a choice. What I mean by that is there are inherited sacrifices that come along with that. Family time, hanging out with friends, being a great friend, being a great son, nephew, whatever the case may be, there are sacrifices that come along with making that decision. Kobe was that type of dude where he realized that you have to sacrifice. He sacrificed his, his flaws. He surrendered his flaws to be a better man. He could have easily continued on the path that he was on. He was Kobe freaking Bryant. But he chose to surrender his life to his family and be the man that they needed him to be. Not what we needed him to be as fans, but what his family needed him to be. That was the difference between Kobe and so many other people that have been in the situation that he, has been, that he was in. He chose to move beyond by changing who and what he was. And God rest his soul, God bless his family, God bless the family of the, of the surviving victims uh, that, were, that was also killed in that helicopter crash. And we, um, and we are here at Lack and Shade. Just wanna leave you with this tribute video. Thank y'all for your time. We love y'all, we appreciate y'all. Let's go to work.